As adults, we all know it is nice and useful to be multilingual. I myself is a Hong Konger and I speak three languages, Cantonese, English and Mandarin. Cantonese is my mother tongue and it is the official language of Hong Kong and Macau and also it's widely spoken in southern part of China, Malaysia, Singapore, Vietnam, etc. It is a very beautiful language which preserved a lot of ancient Chinese language characteristics. I am proud to be a Cantonese speaker. One of the reasons is Cantonese is regarded as one of the most difficult languages to learn in the world. And the fact that I learned it since birth actually saved me a lot of hassles. I moved to the UK about four years ago, and I live in London, that we all know is an incredibly diverse and multicultural city. After moving here, then I noticed, to my surprise, Cantonese is actually the most spoken Chinese language in the UK, having twice as many speakers than Mandarin. According to government statistics based on the census in 2011, there are more than 44,000 people speak Cantonese at home in England and Wales, and of which 12,000 are based in London. A lot of these families are from different diverse, um, diverse ethnicity and cultural backgrounds, of which only one parent would be speaking or would be able to speak Cantonese to their children. These families, over the last decade and over lot, uh, many years, have been working really hard to promote and to pass on this heritage language to their children and family. However, children from these families, unlike myself, they are not proud of their heritage language. I have identified a few reasons behind this. Firstly, the difficulty of the language compounded by the fact that they are living in an English-speaking world. Secondly, Cantonese is not spoken enough in the household. And third, traditional and old-fashioned ways of learning. To expand on these points, just imagine yourself as a small child living in the UK, an English-speaking society, and your parents is Cantonese-speaking and they want you to learn the language and force you to learn it. There's a mental disconnection in you with the language of Cantonese because it seems like it's useless in your daily life and people around you speak English. But your parents force you to learn and put you in old-fashioned weekend Chinese schools. In these schools, your teachers speaking in Cantonese which you don't necessarily understand. And they still make you to do extra homeworks, revise with dictation and exams, whilst all your school friends are enjoying their holiday and weekends, having fun. What's even worse is that you are learning one of the most difficult languages in the world. A lot of second or third generation Cantonese speaking parents actually have been through all these pain when they were younger. So they know it is a problem. But as they grow older, they start to realize the benefits of being multilingual and to learn about their own cultural heritage. That's why they still want their children to learn, the, to learn Cantonese. For first-generation Cantonese-speaking people, living abroad means that they're more aware of their cultural connection and want to embrace it more. So they also want their children to learn Cantonese. But because, as I've said, it is really difficult to engage children in the learning using old methods. These parents starting to find new ways to help their children in learning. There are online social groups on Facebook and in other social media that parents try 
to find ways to share the experience and learning materials to help each other to help their children learning. Also, there are more and more Cantonese-speaking playgroups for preschoolers so that they can learn the language in a fun way. However, professional support and resources are still very limited in this area. I myself is a theatre maker and I've been working with children and young families back in Hong Kong. Having seen these people struggling so much to pass on this heritage language, which I really love, I want to make a change. I want to help these children to learn it in a fun way, using theatre and drama. Using theatre and drama to help the learning of English as an additional language is nothing new. And a lot of communities and workers have been doing this job and making a lot of success. But why is there no one working on this the other way around to help Cantonese speakers to learn it? My friend, Gigi Lam, who is my long-term creative partner and also a music educator, also found this is an issue. So that's why we wanted to work together to help children to learn it in a fun way. This is how we set up Little Bean, the first and only Cantonese-speaking children's theatre in the UK. We hope to help children to learn Cantonese and enjoy it. And we have four strategic objectives. First, musicality. Previously, I mentioned Cantonese is one of the most difficult languages to learn in the world. But what makes it so difficult? <coughs> one of the reasons is Cantonese is a tonal language. There are nine tones in Cantonese, comparing to the four tones in Mandarin. Or, if I put it in a simpler way, there are six phonetic tones and three check tones. I'm not going to talk about check tones today. Let's focus on the six phonetic tones. It can be quite complicated already. So, an example, using the sound C in Cantonese, the six tones would sound like C, 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 C. Okay, let me slow down. Okay. C, 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 C. Do I sound like I'm singing? Do they all sound the same to you? Actually, these six sounds are actually six different words bearing different meanings. First tone, C, poetry. Second tone, C, history. Third tone, C, try. Fourth tone, C, time. Fifth tone, C, market. And lastly, the sixth tone, C, yes. To a second language learner, especially for those whose first language is not a tonal language, Tone can be really abstract and quite difficult to grasp. But tone is really important because you can't say it wrong, otherwise you change the word completely. Let me use an example. Let me use my boyfriend's name as an example. I hope he's not going to get mad at me. can't see him right here. <laughs> so, his Chinese name is Chun. First tone which means the season, spring. When I taught him how to say his name in Cantonese, I reminded him, reminded him not to say it wrong, especially not to say it in the second tone. First tone, C, Chun. If you say it in the second tone, it sounds Chun, which means stupid. <laughs> I'm sure no one wants to call themselves stupid. So bear in mind, tone's really important. There's an easy way to get your head around what tones are. We can use music. You can say, 
，试试试试试试。我，啦啦啦啦啦啦。我 just sing the sofa name out. Mi re do so do ti. Simple. If you know a little bit of music, or if you can sing. But how do we get this idea to children? We use music as well. Young children really like singing, dancing. They're very into nursery rhymes, and they can remember lyrics very easily. But writing Cantonese lyrics is very difficult because, as I've said, it's a tonal language. The phonetic tone of each word in the lyrics need to match with the pitch of the musical note. Otherwise, the meaning would change completely. But think it in another way round. If we can sing the lyrics out, given that it is written in tone, that we already got the right tones of the words. Let me give you another example. One of our nursery rhymes that we sing together with children in our show is about greetings in Cantonese. So in Cantonese, "Good morning" is "Zhou san," and "How are you?" is "Nei hou ma." So the song goes like this. If you would like to sing with me, "Zhou san na Zhou san na Nei hou ma." 早晨啊，早晨啊，你好吗？早晨啊，早晨啊，你好吗？早晨啊，早晨啊，你好吗 ？It is simple, short, and catchy. And now, if you can remember the song, you already got the right tone to say greetings in Cantonese. Good morning is 早晨 and how are you? Is Nei Ho Ma simple? Our second objective of the company is multi-sensory learning. Our nursery rhymes are together, work together with bodily movements and multi-sensory elements. We want to use this to help children to experience to and、um, motivate them in the learning of Cantonese. Kinesthetic movement is really important because it can help children in engaging, especially if they prefer body movement in their learning. And also, it helps them to have another perspective to understand what's the meaning of the words that they are actually learning. Also, because children, when they're learning a new language, there's a period we call. The post, the pre,、um, pre-production stage, which is also called the silent period, where they still struggle to find words and vocabulary, but they can use their body language to express themselves. Kinesthetic movement is also really helpful to help children to engage, because kinesthetic movement is a Good way for them to experience and to motivate. Let me give you an example. One of another nursery rhyme that we use in our show. It's derived from a very popular nursery game, movement game of blowing a big bubble. We use the movement of blowing an imaginary big bubble to help children learn the Chinese character big. Let's imagine together that we have a magic bubble gum.、Okay. Magic bubble gum. Everyone got your magic bubble gum in your hand? Let's put it in a mouth, in a mouth, and chew it. Tastes good. Hmm. And now we're going to blow the biggest bubble in the world. <coughs> Let's do it together. Okay. Breathe in. Bubble, bubble, the biggest bubble. <laughs> And now, my body shows the Chinese character big. 
body movement actually helps enhance memory and build bridges between oral activity and literacy. Our third objective is companionship. We use puppets in our show to help children to engage in the learning process. So this is our puppet. He's an alien friend, Bob Bob. He's a non-verbal puppet, but it acts as a companion, a friendly companion to little children through the experience and the journey in the new language and culture. Using puppets can help children to engage because it captures their attention. Also, for young children, puppets are really interactive and they can interact with the puppet, which eases them in the frustration. And they can learn, learn the language throughout the play. Apart from puppets, participation and engagement of parents is really important as well. The companionship of parents is really crucial, so that's why we encourage parents to interact with their children to participate in our show as much as they can because they can help the children either if they know the language can help them to understand the story or if they don't speak the language they can act as a learning buddy to their children and to learn the language together parents are always the closest and most trusted people young children. Their presence in the learning process helped to build a stress-free and less judgmental environment for children to explore freely in a new language. Lastly, our objective is participation. Using music and theatre to help children to learn in the language is not only for children of Chinese-speaking families, but it also is a good way to engage and involve non-speakers in the UK. After a few development and research process, we found out it is really important for us to make our show bilingual, make it accessible to non-Cantonese speakers in the UK thus bringing cultural cohesion. Also, it is very important to help young children to understand, to engage in the process because they are still beginner. Being an ethnic minority living in London, I myself is really aware and concerned about diversity in the arts and theatre. It is quite rare for me to see other fellow East Asian faces when I go to theatre in the auditorium, I can't find anyone, and let alone on stage. I found out it's less common for Chinese or Cantonese-speaking families to bring their children to theatre and to other arts and cultural events. According to an online survey conducted by my company, less than half of the respondent of Cantonese-speaking families claim that they would bring their children to see theatre shows or to other local arts activities. This shows a rather low participation rate and involvement in the arts. The reason behind maybe it's a language barrier issue, cultural segregation, they don't have access to what's available to them or simply they don't have the interest. We want to make a change. We want to be a driver for change to bring these families into the arts and bring them into theatre. We hope our work can encourage them not to just come to our show, but to also be more involved in local arts and cultural scene. Because of this, we hope this is a way to build bridges between different communities using language as a medium. I love Cantonese, and I'm proud to be multilingual. 
especially proud to be a canting speaker. Young children, they don't understand just yet what's the benefits of being multilingual or being able to speak their heritage language just because they are small. But hopefully, through drama, theatre, music, they can learn the language in a fun way and they can engage themselves more and more and keep learning. Then maybe one day, when they grow up, they can say themselves as a proud multilingual Cantonese speaker, just like me.